All right, so now I'm going to be talking about avalanche terrain. Um, avalanche terrain is essentially terrain that uh, can basically allow avalanches to happen. And so it's really important to be able to identify that terrain. Um, and on days when you should avoid it, uh, avoid it so that you're not going to trigger an avalanche. So this is called an avalanche triangle. And you need all three of these things to trigger an avalanche. So you need an unstable snowpack. Weather that favors that unstable snowpack is it makes it less stable and terrain that is either steep enough or um, some of these other things I'll talk about that allow avalanches to happen. Um, and terrain is the one factor in our, that's in our control. We can't control how stable the snowpack is. We can't control the weather that day. If it's uh, you know getting warm and causing a, a wet loose slide or a wet slab, um, we can't control that at all. But we can control what terrain we ski or ride. Um, so this is a, a quote from Steve Renaud, who's a Sierra Avalanche forecaster. He said, if avalanches are the problem, then terrain selection is the solution. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about slope topography. So topography um, of the slope is basically just uh, you know, what the slope looks like, the shape of the slope, and how that contributes to avalanche risk. So most uh, slopes happen on uh, slopes between 30 to 45 degrees. So as you can see from this chart, about 94% of avalanches occur on these slopes. Um, so it's that range is where most avalanches happen. Um, anything below isn't really steep enough to pull the snow down um, the hill, and anything above that is really hard for snow to hold onto the slope. Um, so there's usually, um, not always, but usually not, not enough snow to hold on to actually trigger an avalanche and get enough force to um, bury. Um, another uh, aspect of slope topography is called a convex roll. And essentially what convex rolls do is it, it creates this area of tension that... Um, there's gravity pulling the snow onto the slope here and pulling the slope down or I guess off the slope here. So the tension between those creates this tension zone that's much easier. You can imagine for this um, slope, if it were a slab, let's say, to break um, and trigger an avalanche and fully go. So convex rolls um, are another thing that put tension on the snowpack and increase the risk of avalanches. The other thing that you can use to identify uh, avalanche strain is vegetation clues. Um, so the first and, and kind of most obvious type of vegetation clue is their flag trees. Um, flag trees can be a sign of recent avalanche uh, activity. That can also be um, from weather too, so you should be wary of flag trees. Um, but you can see here, you know, a lot of snow came down here and knocked the lower branches off, off these trees. You can see it all over all these trees right in the slide path. Um, this, this isn't always necessarily recent. It, it, it's not always... Maybe it's even a couple seasons before that this avalanche flagged these trees, but generally speaking, it's it's uh, signals a, a, a an area where with unstable snow conditions, an avalanche could occur. Um, another vegetation clue is snapped or broken trees. Um, these are signs of very very recent avalanches, and the reason being, obviously, if you can imagine, it's before, um, you know, it, it was after the last the most recent snowfall event. So um, in the case of this. Obviously, an avalanche came through, snapped, and broke off these trees and laid them kind of scattered all throughout the snowpack, and um, no snow fell on top of this. So this is uh, giving you a sign that this is a very, very uh, recent avalanche. And there are a couple implications for this. First of all, you know that avalanches can slide on that slope, but more importantly, this can be an indicator that the slope is slightly more stable to ski than surrounding other slopes, and um, the reason for that being that uh, if an avalanche had already occurred, the force of that avalanche would have been enough, uh, you, in most cases, to trigger uh, another avalanche, you know, any other avalanche problems that are there. So generally speaking, avalanches can trigger out other avalanches, as we saw in the snow science section of this. Um, and so this avalanche, if it did trigger any avalanches, um, that, you know, is a, is a good sign that it's a pretty stable slope to ski if you see a sign of very recent avalanches, such as snap or broken trees. Another type of uh, vegetation clue is young trees. Um, you can imagine if trees are getting snapped and broken off, like in, in the last slide, um, you can imagine these trees are, are growing back. Um, they're, they're smaller um, in slide paths. So you can see all of these trees right here, um, some trees over here. Those can indicate uh, areas where avalanches have happened. Um, and so you know, you're able to identify that that might not be uh, the safest slope to ski. And finally, a complete lack of trees indica indicates a very frequent avalanche path. Uh, la complete lack of trees generally indicates an avalanche path that slides more than once per year. Um, and so you can see with this example, obviously a bunch of snow 
was kind of funneled through the chute here. And you can see the shape of the avalanche apron down here and there are no trees in there. So that's a very, very telling sign that that is a slope that should not be skied at all um, because those are historically large avalanches. If they're knocking down that many, that much debris um, and clearing out entire, you know, miles of, of uh, forest there, that's a sign that that slope should not be skied under any circumstances whatsoever. Um, so next I'm going to talk about consequences and terrain traps. Um, this is a section of avalanche safety I think kind of gets overlooked a lot. Um, but you have to focus on not only what's above you, but also what's below you. Um, so uh, the, a very obvious uh, terrain trap is cliffs. So you can imagine if you're skiing on top of a cliff, um, you know, above a cliff, uh, and an avalanche sweeps you off your feet and you're getting pulled downhill in the, av in the avalanche, um, and you're swept over that cliff, you know, even, even just a small cliff can be really, really dangerous. Um, you hit the ground with a lot of force, as you can probably imagine, um, and it can kind of worsen your consequences and, um, you know, increased risk of inj injury, injury in the case of an avalanche. Um, another thing to look out for is trees at the end of kind of an open, open slope. Um, and the reason being, if you can imagine uh, an avalanche sweeps you off your feet and you're traveling fast downhill towards these trees, you're going to slam into these trees with tremendous force, which can definitely um, worsen injuries and obviously increase risk of fatality. Um, so very dangerous. Um, shoots and gullies. These are definitely kind of a bit hard to understand unless you've been around them and skied in them a lot. But you can imagine these kind of channel and funnel the force into a smaller area. So this has a couple of implications. First of all, the avalanche will be moving faster and with more snow. And particularly if you're in a chute or a gully, um, when the avalanche stops, you can imagine a lot more snow is going to be piled up on top of you because that snow has nowhere else to go. It can't spread out evenly. So it's kind of channeled it in and, and stacked on top of you. Um, so they can be very, very dangerous. Uh, and uh, another one that's a little bit less, um, you're a little bit less you know, likely to encounter, um, especially in the United States, since there aren't a lot of glaciers, but in more glaciated areas, um, such as Europe or maybe Canada or Alaska, you, these are pretty frequent and common problems. Um, crevasses, you can imagine, if you were caught in an avalanche and you know were sucked down a crevasse, there's going to be a lot of snow coming in, in at you from one side and nowhere for that snow to go. Um, so these are incredibly dangerous because if you are caught in one in an avalanche um, and the snow piles up on top of you, that snow can be you know, 40, 50 feet deep. Um, and at that point, there's really no chance of being rescued. Um, so these are probably some of the least frequent uh, terrain traps, but probably some of the most dangerous. Um, so this is just a quick summary of avalanche terrain. Um, and these are some ways you can identify it, and you always want to avoid avalanche terrain when possible. So a general rule of thumb is, you know, sticking under, on slopes that are that have no previous um, avalanche activity, um, as you can see with vegetation clues. Um, and, and generally, you want to stay off of slopes that are kind of between that 30 to 45 range. Um, and obviously, you can pair that with the avalanche forecast and um, make an educated decision on you know, where you ski that day.